Hi, I'm OK Pop Executive Director Jeff Moore, and this is OK Pop from the Vault. Today we're talking about the king of Western Swing, the great Bob Wills. We're fortunate at OK Pop to have the Bob Wills Estate Collection, which is thousands of objects and documents related to the life and career of Bob Wills. The Bob Wills Collection has a lot of pieces, a lot of parts to it. And one of the most interesting is a collection of audio recordings from early in his career. So this audio recording collection is made up of transcription discs that were recorded um, from primarily in the 1940s. And they were recorded live in studio with Bob and his band. So these records aren't your typical records. They're 16 inches in diameter. They may be made out of steel or aluminum or glass in some cases, colored with a lacquer, uh, which means that uh, ultimately they're very fragile. And some of them were in pretty bad condition. We reached out to the Grammy Foundation who uh, awarded the Historical Society a grant uh, to work with the George Blood Lab in Philadelphia to digitize these recordings so we would never have to touch the originals again. Discs of this era aren't standardized like we're used to with LPs. The, there's no standardization for groove size, speed, or equalization, although the 16-inch transcription discs are uh, standardized with speed. And uh, because of the difference in stylus sizes or groove wear, we keep a set of over 30 different stylus sizes so that we can maximize the fidelity of what comes out of the disc. So when we got the digital files back, uh, the, the quality of the recordings were, was, was really bad. And uh, we reached out to our good friend Steve Ripley, uh, who had, you know, decades in recording studios and uh, engineered and mastered multiple albums in his career. And uh, he dove in and he said, yeah, these sound bad, but I think there's something uh, that, we can, that we can get out of this. So what I ended up with was hundreds of songs in digital form that had been transferred, but some were so noisy and so scratchy that you could hardly hear the band, though I could tell the band was great. There was always sort of a balancing act of eliminating noise and but trying to keep the band, the sound of the band. After Steve Ripley cleaned up the recordings, um, the sound is incredible. It actually, when you listen to it, it may, you feel like you're in the room with them as they're recording these songs. I was transported to the middle of those sessions. I mean, I felt lucky to be at least some version of that. And I, you know, and I did, I can see Joe Hawley, uh, I can see Alex Brashear, and I can see Eldon Chamblin in my mind. You get to know that they're doing their best and they're trying their hardest, and at the same time, there's a throwaway quality to this band that is part, that, that part of what made them great. So besides the fact that very few people had heard these recordings uh, in, in decades, we, we discovered that there was a recording session um, from 1949 where Bob Wills ended up doing a lot of the vocals. And it was the first time we had recordings of Bob Wills taking the role of a lead vocalist on several songs, and that was really exciting. Way well, after school, remember darling, we broke the rule. Though you're gone, I don't worry, I'm sitting on top of the world, yes the world. found that we had enough uh, recordings to put out an album of uh, previously unreleased Bob Wills material. This project was incredibly special and one thing that I like about it is that it really fulfills the mission of the Historical Society which is to collect, preserve, and share Oklahoma history and we were able to do all of that through this one project. And these are the types of projects that we'll be able to do uh, moving forward with OK Pop. Cause I'm sitting on top of the world.